So I ended up taking a break after I uploaded the track day video, so for the people that haven't watched it, I'll leave it in the description down below. But we're back with another video. This video is going to be an overview of all the common problems the G35 does have. As much as I want to say the G35 is perfect, there's still a couple things that you need to definitely check out whether you're buying one or you own one. This can help you in case you do end up running into these issues, you know exactly what it is, or if you're going to buy a G35, you can look out for certain things and maybe negotiate the price a little bit lower for that. Most of the things that I'll be talking about will apply to the 350Z as well. So this is just an overview of the G35, 350Z, common problems, and things that you should really know about. Honestly, most of these issues aren't that big of a deal. The biggest one being the oil consumption. So obviously everybody knows about that if you're in the market for it, if you've done your research, or even if you own one, that's a very big deal. Everybody knows about it. VQ consumption, you can't deny it. It's just there. But the rest of the problems aren't that bad. So let's go ahead and get into them. So one of the things that I did to help with the oil consumption is install an oil catch can. So here I have it routed from my PCV valve onto the oil catch can. It catches all the oil and then it goes back into the intake plenum. This will help, but it won't eliminate the oil consumption. It'll basically help a little bit with that. But let's say you have money for it. Let's say you're willing to fix it correctly. You would have to rebuild the engine and go ahead and have new piston rings in there, making sure you have a good seal, making sure you get little to no blow by, and that way you can have a really good engine that's not burning oil. It's not the end of the world, it's just the way these cars are, so if you definitely wanna be in the market for them, make sure you're checking your oil. If you own these cars, check your oil, please. Now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and go on to the next problem. So the next problem on the G35s and 350Zs is gonna be the lower control arm bushings and also the compression rod bushings. So these bushings can barely do their job when the car isn't lowered. So once you lower your G35 or once you lower your 350Z, these bushings just can't handle it. They just give out too much load on them, so that's something that you have to consider is definitely something I recommend doing to your G35 or 350Z. It's going to make the steering feel way better and it's also maintenance that you need to do regardless. So something you'll notice in the suspension, you'll want to go with polyurethane. The OEM rubber just can't handle it so you definitely want to go with something a little stronger, a little bit more stiff. That'll definitely help making sure that you get a long lasting bushing and you also get really good steering response. So to show you guys right there is going to be where the lower control arm bushing is going to be. You should, you'll be able to tell tell that it's worn or it's on its way of giving out when you'll see that it's closer to the left side of the subframe or the right side. And then coming on the other side so I can show you guys the compression arm. This is the compression arm and the bushing that you're going to want to replace is the red one right there. So the red portion is the bushing I replaced with energy suspension. So I ended up using polyurethane bushing so that way I can go ahead and not have to worry about that anymore. Um, I know a lot of people once they lower their cars it just locks on them because it ends up giving out. So that bushing and the one on the inner control arm are the the ones to replace. So this problem is a really, really big one and I advise if you buy one, go ahead and do this the first couple days you literally buy this car because it's going to happen to you. The camshaft and the crankshaft sensors, those sensors are just going to go ahead and go off on you one day and you're not going to know when. It doesn't give you a warning. It just happens. So I definitely advise replacing those ASAP. I've owned two G35s and on both G35s that has happened to me. Mine is a non-rev up. It's a 2004 so I only have two camshaft sensors and then one crankshaft in the bottom. If you have a rev up, you're going to have four camshaft and then one crankshaft. So definitely make sure you buy only Nissan or Infinity grade camshaft sensors and crankshaft sensors. Don't buy camshaft sensors or crankshaft sensors from AutoZone, O'Reilly's, Advanced Auto Parts. None of those brands are going to be good. I personally ended up buying AutoZone ones and then I went to O'Reilly's and bought an O'Reilly's one. They suck. They're not good, they don't last. Yes, they have lifetime warranty, but they just aren't good. Even Nissan ended up revising these sensors and they went from plastic to metal, so it just goes to show they're improving that part. That part's gonna be way better than the plastic sensors that you're getting from O'Reilly's and AutoZone regardless. If you're tight on money, you don't wanna buy the OEM ones from Nissan or Infiniti, I would go with Hitachi, but nothing lower than Hitachi. I would definitely go for Nissan or Infiniti since they did revise it and they made a metal this time. Trust me, save your money, save the time, go ahead and buy them from a quality brand. So the next problem on the G35s and 350Zs is gonna be the engine again. I know it's another engine thing. This one's more maintenance wise. It's just one of those things that's gonna happen to every car regardless, but it is something to talk about on the G35s and 350Zs. The valve covers on the G35s and 350Zs are a common problem as well. So they will start to leak and you will start to smell a little bit of burnt oil if it starts leaking onto your headers. That also is a hazard by the way, having oil going onto your 
your hot headers as you're driving your car is not something you want. But not only that, you also will get oil into your spark plug tubes. And now this happens because the O-ring seals on the valve covers themselves have an O-ring that fails. So when that ends up happening where your spark plug lies, there's going to be just a bunch of oil going into your spark plug tube. And when that happens, you can get a misfire if it's bad enough. So it's just something to take note of. If you're going to do your valve cover gaskets, make sure that everything is good beforehand. Like I said, this one isn't too crazy. It's more of a maintenance thing. It's going to happen with every car eventually. You will need to replace like the valve cover gaskets. It's a common thing to fail, but it's no exception in these and it's something you definitely want to take care of so you don't have a disgusting burning smell and you also don't get a misfire on your car. By the way, guys, let me know if you've had any of these problems. I'd love to know what your guys' problems were. Um, that can also help people that are looking to buy G35s, people that own G35s. Leave a comment down below for any problems that you've had in the G35. We'll have a little thread going on so where people can see and have a little bit of a database of her problems on the G35s and 350Zs. But with that being said, let's go ahead and go on to the next problem. All right, guys. So next problem is going to be inside of the car and it's going to be the door lock actuators. It's something that is extremely annoying for me and is something that is definitely expensive to do if you want to do it through the Nissan or Infiniti way. You know, as these cars get older, it's just something that's going to end up happening to where the actuators just don't work properly anymore. They're just weak and, you know, they're just not working as good as they should. So personally, both sides ended up failing like around the same time. So I ended up finding a way to go ahead and replace them because each side through Nissan or through Infiniti, it's $150 for the actuator that is, you know, the OEM actuator for the car. So what I ended up finding out was actuators on eBay for $20. I ended up buying both of them. I ended up going and bolting them onto the door itself on the inside. It is a little bit of custom work, but it's nothing that you can't do yourself. So I'll put the link to the video that I made for that specifically on the top right. It's definitely something to watch. It's going to happen eventually to you guys. You know, these cars are 15 plus years old, so it's definitely something that's going to happen eventually, if not already. It's a really cheap fix and it'll definitely help making sure that these work properly again. And you also save a lot of money because it's, you know, 300 bucks for both of them when you can just pay 20 bucks. Since we're with the doors already, another thing that's going to end up failing eventually is going to be the windows. The window motors just can't handle how heavy that glass is since it is a big piece of glass. It is going to end up failing and it's going to be something you're going to have to go ahead and fix. Luckily, it's really cheap to replace. It's like 30 bucks on Amazon to find, you know, a brand new window motor. The only thing that's kind of annoying is having to take off the door cards to go ahead and replace it. But other than that, it's a really straightforward process and there's tons of videos online on how to do it. All right, guys. So next problem is going to be the notorious yellowing of the headlights. These aren't the OEM ones. These are aftermarket ones that I ended up buying because the other ones were so bad and they were yellowing. I'll put pictures on screen right now so you can see what I'm talking about if you haven't seen it already. But it's something you're going to have to fight with either trying to fix them by, you know, wet sanding them and then putting in some new clear coat. Or you can do what a lot of people do and buy aftermarket headlights, whether it's a different design or just something that it looks the same, but is brand new. It is something that's just common with these cars. It's so bad, in fact, that we're on a bottle. <laughs> so that just lets you know how bad it really was. But that's something that will make your car look way better once you go ahead and fix them. And it definitely will give you better visibility through because you'll be fixing all that haziness. Next problem on the G35s and the 350Zs is going to be the differential bushings. It even has a nickname called the tear of death because it has a liquid filled inside of the bushing. The downside with that is that that rubber doesn't last. Most of the rubber on the OEM Nissan stuff doesn't really last. So it's one of those things where you kind of have to replace an upgrade. So if you're looking to performance drive, it is a pretty big deal. But if you're looking to just daily drive it, it's something that eventually you would want to fix, but it's not a major fix right away. One of the side effects you'll feel when you have a blown differential bushing is you'll get wheel hop when you really push it hard. You know, launches, you'll get really bad wheel hop. It just won't feel as nice and as crisp in the rear. Now we're on to the last two problems that the G35s and 350Zs have. It's a common thing that you will find eventually. So one of those two problems is going to be the coolant bleeder port that is located by the firewall right there. So Nissan and Infiniti ended up using a plastic bleeder port and that becomes a problem because plastic and heat do not mix well and after a while you know through the years of driving the car eventually that ends up cracking and you get a big white cloud of smoke from all the coolant gushing out through there um, when I was replacing mine as soon as I was taking it out it ended up breaking on me on my hands so I ended up buying a Z1 Motorsports aluminum one so I love the fact that it's metal so I don't have to worry about that ever again but it's definitely something to take note of and definitely something to not skip out and make sure you get that replaced ASAP now last but not least this one is gonna be the one that a lot of people will relate to this is one that has happened to a lot of people and it is the gas gauge
gauge not reading properly. So this one is a common issue on the G35s and 350Zs where the gas gauge is not indicating properly. It'll say they have half a tank, but it's actually empty. So you end up driving it and you run out of gas. So it can be one of the two prompts or it can be both of these prompts. One of them being that the gauge cluster is messed up and the other one being that the fuel level sending unit inside of the tank is messed up. Usually with that one, you can go ahead and clean it and then it'll be good to go. Um, but if you have had it and you have found a fix, let people know in the comments down below. It can help a lot of people out. So there you guys have it. Those are some of the most common G35 and 350Z problems you'll encounter. There are a couple more problems that I could mention, but they're not that big of a deal and they will not happen as often as these. Even with all these problems that the G35 and 350Zs have, I still think they're a really, really good sports car and they're definitely reliable for what they are. If you take care of the car, it'll definitely take care of you. And these are some of the problems that you can go ahead and tackle before they become an actual problem where you're stuck on the side of the road. So I definitely think this will be helpful information for the people that are looking to get into G35s or 350Zs or for the people that already have them and aren't that up to date with all the problems and all the things that you should definitely be aware of. Like I said already, if you guys have any other tips that you can leave, go ahead and leave them down below in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for all the support. We reached 5,000 like I mentioned in the last video, but I wanted to reiterate. We're going to go ahead and start a different phase on the G35, so I'm very excited for that. So go ahead and leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, plenty of G35 content. You'll definitely learn something here, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.